a year ago, you came out and said that Trump is going to win by a landslide, by, is going to win by such a margin that we haven't seen it in recent, in recent history. Yes, I did. Would you like me to take you through that? Sure. <laughs> so the prediction was based on his persuasion skills, not on politics. Um, I don't, my politics don't align with him or with anybody else. Uh, but I am a trained hypnotist. I learned hypnosis when I was in my 20s. Went to, actually went to school for it, got certified. Okay, so you could actually hypnotize me right now. I could, yes. You could. Uh, and I've been learning the tools of persuasion in general beyond hypnosis all my life, both for general usefulness, but because it's especially important as a writer. Because when you write, you're trying to persuade. And so... I observed in Trump the highest level of persuasive talent I've ever seen. And what a lot of people thought was random behavior and childish talking and bad vocabulary and whatever else you heard about him, I recognized as technique. So in the beginning, people said, my God, he talks like a sixth grader who doesn't know words. But months later, as he was rising in the polls, you saw the experts start to consolidate around what I said in the beginning, which was, wait a minute, this talk is really effective. He keeps it simple because that's who he's talking to. And he repeats things because repeating makes a difference. So if I were to ask you, you know, what, what are Trump's main things he believes, everybody could list it. Crooked Hillary. Yeah. Make <laughs> and, America great again. And then you ask, you know, what are, what are any of his compo- opponents, you know, during the primaries or now, what do any of the opponents think of you like, stuff, make things better. You know, it's just a less clear message. So in many ways, he had this level of talent that I'd never seen. And so I, so I predicted he would just slice through the field and, and cut them apart. He did win the, the nomination against everybody else's projections. Yeah, in a landslide. And I would argue that until the Access Hollywood tape came out, which, let's face it, nobody could have predicted that. <laughs> that. That specific thing was unpredictable. What you could predict is that women would come forward with stories of his bad behavior. Right. But without him saying things on tape, it would have just been background yeah. noise. And, oh. and he'd already said, I'm no angel, and you know, you know, he did confess things in the past. It just wouldn't have moved the needle. Right. But the double whammy of hearing it in his own voice, and especially the way he said it. Yeah, you grab him by the pussy. Yeah, and then, then adding you know, a dozen people coming forward and saying things. Doesn't mean any of it happened. All right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the one who's going to say any of that's true. I've been deeply enough involved in this election cycle to know that there are a lot of things that are literally made up. Um, I'm not saying that those women are making up anything. I'm just saying you can't believe anything in the election cycle. What I didn't count on, so I, for a while I changed my prediction, but I always had a caveat. I said, unless something changes. Because nobody saw that happening. Nobody saw the access to Hollywood tape. So something else could happen. Mm-hmm. Could be WikiLeaks. Maybe Clinton will you know, drop dead or something. Um, which is not impossible. I mean, she did collapse at the 9-11 event. But I think, amazingly, what we're seeing happen now is that people are actually getting used to it. Meaning that if, if Trump were a normal candidate and he had no problems except this one thing, this you know, Access Hollywood tape and then the women corroborating it, he'd be done. But there's so much noise in this campaign that a, a, a scandal that used to last you know, two months of talking now lasts two weeks and two weeks have gone by. <laughs> and, and suddenly the importance of that event is just getting lost in all the other events. Okay. So I've, um, I've reasserted my prediction that he's going to win. So you still feel he's going to win by a landslide? I think the landslide's a little harder to say, okay. but, I, but I am still going to say that because it's more fun to say that since I said it in the beginning. Um, but I would say his odds of winning now are, are really high. You said that at this point, people have a choice between the crook versus the monster. Yeah, so I try to put everything in persuasion terms. So forget about their policies, forget about the facts, forget about the fa- you know, that they're both lying about anything important. You know, nobody makes a decision based on those things. That's the filter I put on that. They do make decisions on how they feel. All right? And they do make decisions on how um, each of them frames the other one. 
So Trump has framed Clinton as crooked, and it's sort of a catch-all that takes everything from, hey, where's, where are those emails to, what are you doing with that Clinton Foundation? Like everything goes into that basket. She's defined him as this dark monster. And dark, by the way, is a persuasion term that probably comes from professionals on her side. Um, that everything he does looks monstrous and racist and homophobic. Now, if you were to dig into any specifics, you would find that the only bad things he does are statements about people who are not Americans. So he wants to well, treat Americans well, special. Hold on. You'd like to test that. I'd like to test that. Proceed. When he started mocking the, the disabled man during one of his speeches, when he did the whole uh, thing, a lot of people were very turned off by that. You know, 60 Minutes just ran a special and you know, they, they had a bunch of people in Ohio, and this one woman said, that was the moment where I said, there's no way I could vote for this man. Um, have you seen the video of him mocking non-disabled people with the same mannerisms? No. All right, so you don't know the context. Okay. All right, so everything that people imagine about him is because something is either out of context or because his opponents, who are really good persuaders, have said, hey, this could be, deter this could be interpreted two different ways. But if you look at all these other terrible things he's done, it's obviously another terrible thing. But mocking a disabled man is still mocking a disabled man. I don't care if you mock other people in a similar fashion, you're still mocking a disabled man. No, the, Pretending to be like, you know, doing the whole disabled hand motion no, and so no, forth. My point is that when he mocked people who are not disabled, when he was giving his impression of them talking, he did this. Whoa, 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 whoa. So he actually did a very similar hand gesture. Now, if you're telling me, I'm not the one who's going to say, in the back of his mind, was he influenced by the fact that this guy has a bad, bad arm? Probably. But you have to put it in context, that this is the thing he does for everybody. And, and I've seen several videos of him doing that recently, okay. you know, um, before he did it with, with this gentleman. Now, I'm not defending it. I'm saying if you see it in context, it looks different than if you don't see it in context. What about the comments about Mexicans saying that the Mexicans that are coming over are all rapists and thieves and so forth. Right. When the reality yeah. is, yes, there's going to be bad people that come over, but the majority of people that are coming over here are just trying to find work. So here's the context. He says this, and then he also proves it to us so we know he's telling the truth. It's in his he books. gives an example of some, some, some college girl who got raped and killed by an illegal Mexican. No, no hold on. Um, he, he tells everybody that he speaks in hyperbole, because that gives him a better result. Basically, he's always negotiating with the public. So he says things that are bigger, worse, more important, because he wants to ramp up your emotional connection to it. So when he said that um, some of the folks coming from Mexico were rapists, nobody should have thought, is he saying children are rapists? Because a lot of them are children. Is mm -hmm. he saying that women are raping people? He's not. Is he saying that all the men who are coming across are raping? He's not. Did he leave the impression that there were more rapists coming over as immigrants than there might be in the general population? He did. But keep in mind that the people coming over did have uh, you know, a higher percentage of criminal class. I think that's objectively true. And, he, and the point he was making is that if you're trying to protect, protect America, and that's your job as president, then any crime that comes in, for any reason, is undesirable. Okay. So his examples were terrible, but if you were to look at it, you know, what could he have meant? He couldn't have meant that children are rapists. He couldn't have meant they're all rapists. You know he doesn't think that. But did he say it in a way that people interpret it? Yeah, that's on him. So he said it in a bad way. So the one example was uh, the, way he, the way he phrased the immigration problem is sounded like a little sketchy. So if that, if that were the only thing he ever said, you'd say, hmm, give him the benefit of a doubt. But then imagine there are other things. Let's say the Judge Curiel situation, right. where he said he was a, quote, Mexican judge and he might, get, might not get a fair hearing. Yeah, because he's, he's building a wall. Right, keep in mind the context that because of the things that Trump had said, 90% of American-born uh, American people of Mexican heritage probably were against him. So to say that someone who also shares that same heritage might be a member of the 90% who have a problem with them is not unreasonable. And in fact, it's, any, it's what any lawyer would do. 
any lawyer would look for bias and try to remove it. But they would also game the system, as he does. Well, but a lawyer can't say that a judge needs to be removed because of his... Conflict. You do that all the time. Really? So, so a lawyer could actually go into a courtroom and say, I want this judge removed because that's, that's it'll, be a, cause it'll, be, it'll be conflict of interest. That's normal business, sure. Huh, I mean, okay. in, in more cases, the judge would remove themselves because they'd say, oh, I... So let's say my wife works at this company and they're the subject of the suit. And that happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been in, in court before. Usually you're, you're trying to be as nice to the, to the judge as possible because you can completely wreck your case. Well, so in this, this case, let me just finish this example. Mm -hmm. So Trump is setting it up that if he loses the case, he can say, oh, there was some bias because he's already signaled that. If he wins the case, he wins the case. He's happy. So he's trying to create a situation where he's got two reasonably good outcomes. Now... His choice of the word Mexican was the red flag that sent everybody crazy, right? But imagine your friends, and I'm sure you have some friends who are, let's say, third generation Italian. Mm -hmm. American born for three generations. And if you say, what are you? They say, I'm Italian. If you ask somebody who was you know, born in America, has Mexican parents, what are you? They'd say, yeah, American, of course. But they also refer to themselves as Mexican. It's common language. People refer to themselves exactly the way Trump referred to the judge. Now, I, don't, I assume Trump knew that there wouldn't be someone who was a non-citizen as a judge. I mean, does anybody assume that? So the assumption was that Trump was saying he was unqualified by being Mexican. There's nothing he said like that. He said something that is so mainstream legal strategy, which is, hey, this person fits into a category of people who are likely to be biased because most of the people in that category are biased. And I don't think anybody's arguing that Trump's comments caused him <laughs> to you know, have some animosity in the you know, American-born you know, people of Mexican heritage. Okay. I don't think anybody's arguing that point. But I think that, that Trump just has a pattern when things don't go his way, he, he calls foul. He didn't win an Emmy, so therefore the Emmy, the, the Emmy board is, you know, somehow stacked against him. You know, he says that if he doesn't win this election, it's because it's rigged, even though elections have been going on for hundreds of years and you've never seen a rigged election before. What do you mean? There's plenty of rigged elections. The whole election being rigged. No, there's plenty of cases where there are lots of instances of elections being rigged. Certainly in other countries. Small instances, in, not the entire election. Well, in, so what, look what's different about this, this election. I mean, I mean, there was a whole thing with um, Al Gore in, the, in Florida. Yeah, and there's the assumption that Kennedy only won because there was um, rigging in Ohio, right? Oh, okay, I didn't know that. All right, so I may be wrong about that. But there's an assumption that Kennedy only won because rigging. So there are two elections where something strange happened that really determined who was the president. But, but here's the bigger point. In the past, it's true that there, there's always been rigging at local elections, ballot stuffing stuff, but it has never summed up to anything that mattered, right? What, here's what's different about this election. Hillary Clinton has successfully, with her, with her surrogates, framed Trump as the next Hitler, like an actual Hitler monster who will ruin not only the country, but will destroy the planet in a nuclear fireball. Right, that's the framing that she has successfully persuaded people to believe in. Now, under those situations, if you could fix an election to stop Hitler, would you do it? If you, if you controlled the software to some of the machines, you know, it's different software for different machines, you're the programmer, you knew you could get away with it, or maybe you think you might get caught, but you're stopping fucking Hitler. Right. Would you do it? Well, you yourself... No, hold on. Answer the question. Would you do it? Would I do it? <laughs> you yeah. wouldn't stop Hitler? Yeah, I would stop Hitler. All right, so right. we've never had that situation before. We've never so had Hitler. We've never had a, uh, the thought that maybe Hitler would be running. So under that scenario, the, the belief that people might be more inspired to try harder to, to rig it and rig it at a higher level because all these votes go somewhere to get counted and summed up, right? So at some point, there's a choke point where software is counting stuff. And there's only a few people who control that software. And some of those people are not going to be Trump supporters. And some of them have access to the code. And they're going to have this decision. 
damn it, I don't want to break the law. I don't want to subvert the will of the people. But I'm not going to be the guy who let Hitler come to power. Well, but you could say that both ways because it's not like the country is 90% Hillary Clinton, 10% no, but uh, you're, Trump. But you're, it's still roughly in the 50-50 range. No, no, it doesn't work both ways. And it, it aggressively doesn't work both ways because Trump has not um, framed Clinton as a monster. Okay. Corruption is actually something we expect of our politicians. Even if, I believe that Clinton's um, supporters also believe she's corrupt. They just don't think it's that much. Yeah. <laughs> and they think it's sort of the normal amount. Right. I feel like the whole WikiLeaks thing, people don't really care about it all that much. People don't care because it has no emotional content. It's a little bit lawyerly and accountingly. You know, you have to figure out, oh, she did this, but it looks like this, and maybe she should have done this differently. It's, there's a lot of thinking involved. Yeah. There's no emotion. Right. So. There's no grabbing by the pussy. <laughs> Nothing like that. But, I mean, when you look at that particular situation, and Trump's reply was, this is just locker room talk. I could tell you that me and my friends don't talk like that. And, and I've, I've interviewed porn stars. I've, you know, I've been around the block. And we don't talk about grabbing women forcibly and, you know, and, and doing what really is sexual assault on a certain level. Now, are there men who have done this? Have I known men that have done this? Yeah. But do I want these people as a president of the United States? You know, can you really just say that I just want a regular guy running or a regular woman running this country, the most powerful country on earth? Just a regular person just like me that makes the same stupid mistakes? No, like I want someone of a higher caliber. So I think we, we're now past the time when we can have good presidents. <laughs> and and what, okay. I mean, what I mean by good is someone who's a good person as well as capable of doing the job. We'll get people who are capable of doing the job of president. Plenty of those. Obama. Uh, well, I think he was a good president. You don't think he was a good person? Oh, I, I say we're, we were past it. Oh, now that Obama's done, that, that was the last one? That may be our last good president. Right, because and there's the, really nothing, you couldn't find anything about Obama that you could say, like, this is just a putrid human being. Like, well, well, you should assume that I know more about Obama than you do. So, okay. Because I have different sources. Okay. So, well, what, what so has Obama so, done that. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I, I liked him as a president. So I'm, I'm not going to be the guy who, okay. who says anything bad about him. Right. Well, I mean, for example, like Obama has admitted in his own book that he's done cocaine before and stuff like that. So here's my point. We reach a time when you're almost always going to have a hot mic, an email, or a person who spills the beans on everybody. And the rules are off now. This election just, just threw all the rules out the window. If one of them wins by going dark, and they're both going dark, so the, a dark person is going to win, right? Somebody who wins. What, what does that mean, going dark? Uh, meaning going brutal about people's personal life, you know, getting really into okay. the, the ugly stuff. If that works, and it will, because they're both doing it, and one of them's going to win, it will always be valid. People will always do it when they need to win. So there's, there's nobody who could, nobody is, who's that age, let's say 50 to 70, nobody that age has a clean record. If you knew everything they did, right? There's nobody who can pass that filter. So, but I think what we're seeing, and this is how I expect what I said before, we may be in a, entering a post-scandal world in the sense that uh, you, know, you could find out your candidate for president is you know, eating babies for breakfast, and you'd say to yourself, but not a lot of babies. Can we just talk about you know, what you're gonna do for me? Um, and there's a little bit of sort of a growing up to it. You know, in the same way that you know, what, 20 years ago you would never admit, if you were a guy, you'd never admit that you'd looked at porn. And then you know, it's on Friends TV show that you know, they're, they're all enjoying their porn. And now pretty much anybody would admit it in public. It wouldn't be a big deal. Okay. Um, I think as horrible as this Trump stuff is, and I see it the same way. I mean, I, the, the things he said are you know, indefensible. Yeah. I think the public is going to say, you know, what's my self-interest? You know, were my children going to use 
either Clinton or, or Trump as a role model? Which, which one of them do you want for your role model? <laughs> mm-hmm. None of them. Well, you said that out of 300 million people in the U.S., the best that we could find is two 70-year-old racists. Yeah, so the funny thing is that that's what it looks like. If you, if you give it the comic filter, it's like, we well, look really hard, and you know, the best we could come up with is you know, the crook and the monster. The reality is, and what I'm trying to say, is no matter who you replace them with, if you give people a year to dig up opposition research with all, all the recorded things these days, you know, the number of things that are recorded in digital form, mm-hmm. everybody's a crook and a monster. Uh, those days are over when you have good people. You know, we're the same people. Well, I, I think no, being, nobody, nobody's worse or better. It's still Kennedy's, LBJ. They're, they're well, all just as bad. I think when you look at back, back at certain people, you know, like a lot of people do stupid stuff when they're kids. Like I did. You know, if there was a mic on me when I was in elementary school, I probably said the most ignorant stuff <laughs> ever. But there's a point where you have to be responsible for your actions. You know, when Justin Bieber did all that stupid stuff as a kid and, you know, used the N-word and so forth, people were upset and some people still hate him over that, but there's a certain degree of, he's a kid, he made a stupid mistake. But a man in his 50s doing certain things really is past the point of being excusable. Which, which president, which past president, do you believe wasn't fucking around in the White House? Obama, a past president. Um, don't think Bush was, either Bushes. You, you may hold that opinion. I'm pretty sure you're wrong about that. Yeah? <laughs> and by the way, I'm not saying about anything about a, a particular individual. But again, I do have other sources okay. than you do. Okay, so, so you're saying that your sources have told you otherwise. I'm not going to you know, name specific presidents. Okay. But, but your assumption that there are some of them who did not do horrible things in office, I think is probably off base. Fucking around... In the White House, I don't look at it as being a huge deal. Sexually assaulting somebody, I do consider a huge deal. Well, remember, it's alleged. Bragging about sexually assaulting somebody. What he said was, you know, I, I hate to be the you know, lawyer for Trump, because it's indefensible, so I'll, let, let me start with indefensible. Okay. But I will clarify. He said, they let you do it. Now... In my experience, it's very unusual for a man and a woman, for the man to say, may I now touch you there? You're looking at their body language, the way they flirt with you, things they've said, the situation, and you're making a judgment. Is this the time I do this thing? Now, they let you. I'll tell you how I interpreted it. I interpreted it as the situation is such that I knew I could get away with this. Mm-hmm. Not that he snuck up behind somebody and said, Arr, grab him. Right? <laughs> so, and, and I've also written about this, that there's also a celebrity problem, which is that even I found this, you know, my, my minor level of celebrity. People flirt with celebrities yeah. in a way that looks like they're interested in more than just your celebrity. And, and maybe they are, I don't know. So the odds of Trump having a false positive meaning that he really thought the signals were there and, and he acted too aggressively and you know, pushed somebody up a wall and kissed them. I totally believe that probably happened. Right? But if you weren't there, there's two things you don't know. What did he see that made him think that was a good idea? Okay. And the other thing you'll never see is how many times did he do it and the woman responded positively and they, had, they made wonderful love. Well, I mean, I'm sure quite well, a let, bit. Let me just finish that thought because yeah. that's important. If out of 100 times he tried it, there were three times when the woman said, what the hell? I was not thinking that. Right. I would say that's a guy who was wrong three times out of 100. No excuse, right? But he was just wrong. Right. But don't assume that he wasn't seeing signals, even if he misinterpreted those signals. So if you look at the whole picture, it's probably a different picture than what that quote says, because, again, he was talking to a dude, didn't think anybody was listening. He tells us in every topic, on everything he talks about, he uses hyperbole. So we don't, we, you shouldn't take him literally on anything, whether it's policy or that. Like, why would that be the one thing you took him literally on when you don't believe anything else he's ever said? Right, because he constantly just throws out things like, 
you know, my next election, I'll have 99% of the black vote when at the time he said he had 1% of the black vote. Yeah, so, so why should you take this one thing he said on a hot mic as being, oh, that was the one honest thing he said that one time. Okay. It seems unlikely. But again, let me, let me bookmark this by saying I'm not going to defend him, right? Because yeah. if the allegations are true, it's indefensible. Yeah. But I will say that we probably will have to choose between you know, a crook and a monster, so. Well, you said that Donald Trump has ended your speaking career and reduced your income by 40%? Yeah, I mean, obviously those are you know, estimates that can't be uh, you know, figured out on a spreadsheet, but the, um, the speaking career part has completely ended from having multiple speaking requests pretty much every week for my entire career to about, about this time last year, they just stopped. Really? I, I had one on the books that canceled and didn't give a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that's because of Trump? What else changed? Well, but you're, you're pro-Trump. Oh, being pro-Trump has... Being associated with him. Ah, so, okay. I got um, it now. It took me a second. Yeah, <laughs> pro-Trump isn't exactly the, the description I would use. Cause keep in not mind being anti-Trump. Yeah, if you're not anti-Trump, you, you are the enemy. You are the enemy. Right. Especially in California. Yeah, it's real dangerous here. 